Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for attending our talk. This research is about replay attacks on Ethereum smart contracts. Now let me give a brief self-introduction. I must emphasize here that Zheng Xianbai is the primary researcher. He did, much, he did more than half of the work, but for some issues of research, he can't attend this talk today. So the job is ours to introduce the research to you. My name is Yi Wei Zhang. I am a security researcher of Unicorn team, and this is my colleague, Quan Zhe Chai. Unicorn team is a research group within 360 technology. The team was formed in 2014. We focus on the security issues in numerous types of wireless systems, but we also encourage members to do other research that they are re interested in. This, this is why we also have this topic. Today's talk composes four parts. At the beginning, we will introduce the background of block, blockchain, smart contract, and Ethereum. Then we will discuss security issues about the potential risks in smart contracts. Thirdly, we will talk about the key point, replay attack. And we are going to show why it exists and how it works. And the last one is a demonstration of replay attacks and the statistical analysis of similar of similar vulnerabilities. Now let Quan Chai show you the first part. Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Hey. Hello, everyone. As you know, my name is Quan Zhe Chai. Uh, I come from China, so the first topic is in background and mainly about the introduction of related files of replay attacks like blockchain, smart contacts, or Ethereum. So uh, we've heard some news about blockchain, but what is blockchain? Yeah, um, blockchain, so to speak, is a large stack globally, directly uh, computer network, and the users can interact with it by sending transitions. Each transition is a message with uh, cryptic graphic, central, and uh, the order of uh, transition enforced is uh, defined by mechanism called global, called global conditions. <coughs> the advantage of blockchain are listed here. Uh, it has a um, unified database with repaired uh, concerns, which allows uh, settlement to be completed with three, uh, within three to um, 60, 60 seconds, rather than three days or and more. It uh, offers a uh, way with uh, uh, large scale fault tolerance in which system can withstand uh, uh, 33 to 40 percent. Uh, now the feature all still operate normally under the control of hackers. Blockchain does not really um, trust and uh, not controlled by any single uh, administrator or organization except for prevailed chain and uh, custodian chain. Mm, so it is able to be adopted external observer can, ver uh, can verify the, histo uh, the history of transitions. It can operate auto, auto, auto autonomous without uh, any, hu any human involvement. So next, then what actually can uh, blockchain achieve? First, it can issue uh, cryptical currency, which is uh, digital asset on the blockchain. 
Right. Uh, right now, um, sorry, sorry, public chains offer their own tokens to limit the rate of updating transitions and uh, uh, incentives the 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 monetations of blockchain. Next, it has some non uh, monetary feature in include the record record record. As uh, DNS based on blockchain and uh, timestamp uh, machines are of to crack high value data, then um, blockchain systems support some other other functionality, including <coughs> including concepts that can assure custom uh, custom the and uh, digitals and uh, asset exchange, uh, digital asset are offer op option and uh, fiscal deal with this and uh, generally computer. I'm sorry, my poor English, so I try to relax. Sorry. <clears throat> For now, we have no uh, main, we have not many application of blockchain in the field of the uh, monetization. How about those in the now uh, now factory field? About uh, 2013, the public realized that blockchain can be used in hundreds of applications. Besides the besides the uh, besides uh, that and uh, such as uh, and uh, such as I said, um, dominant recognition and ownership recognition market for uh, market for for facilitating and uh, Internet of Things, voting and so on. And uh, how to relate those applications? We need the smart contract. What is smart contract? It is a computer program running in a Secure development that actually uh, th that automatically transfers digital assets according to previous uh, previous rules. Um, for example, for example, I will give you a tips. Uh, suppose your bed with your girlfriend that sh she will give you give you one hundred bucks if you can figure out what's what's inside her shopping bag. Maybe that is a dress or T-shirt, and you made it. But your girlfriend do not pay you anything. You have you ha you have to accept it because that you have no other way to get your reward. However, if there is a smart contact, once you made your guess uh, current, and uh, the coder will automatically be enforced, and the and the reward in real solution it. Uh, uh, it might be a uh, digital token will come into your pa your pocket. So uh, smart contacts are uh, priests of coder living in the blockchain and uh, in, and uh, enforcing certain f fun certain functionalities. <clears throat> How do you contact the secure development for a smart contact? Uh, certainly, there are many public chains support smart contacts, and uh, let's see the most popular one, ASM. What is ASM? It's a blockchain with a built-in programming language, and it offers maximum uh, app server and uh, and uh, for stately. So it is very ideal to process smart contracts. ASM has a secure operation system called ASM, uh, called ASM Virtual Machine, also as also known as uh, EVM. This is not uh, uh, encapsulated by a sandbox, but uh, in fact, but uh, in fact, it is complete, complete uh, isolated. What that is a coder that run inside the EVM does not have access to the, net, to the network or file system or another proxies. Even smart contracts have limited uh, contact with, uh, with another or other smart contracts. With EVM, uh, so 
our smart uh, contacts can be used in many things. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, one of the one of them is uh, financial things, uh, financial thing, including hedging, contract saving wallet, and uh, other non financial things include uh, includes online voting, decentralized the manage and manage and uh, DNS recognitions. Mm. However, with the uh, increasing speed of application of SM and smart contact, many security issues come along. Um, according to analyze, anal, 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 according to analytics, uh, 100,000 new users join the SM uh, ecosystem daily on the uh, they, are, they, are quite, they are quite active and uh, enforce delay trans transitions over one million times on the SM. This is, this is increasing mag players attack, uh, att attack many eyes from hackers and uh, security, issue, security issues come up for more frequently. In many parts of our ecosystem, such as uh, uh, such as Exchange Wallet, wallet and Smart Quant ATC, there are there are several secu sec security issues come up, including exchange attack and wallet hijacking, wallet hijacking and overflow attack in smart contacts. As to smart contact, which is most vulnerability, uh, vulnerable in the system, there are also many security issues. Uh, just for 2018 in April, contacts such as the BS were detected with, detect with vulnerability. In May, security attacks to several contacts like EDU or other. In June, uh, there are another security issue, there are other another security issues reported to smart contact like SNS uh, or this open air uh, loopholes made a huge impact on the module module uh, exchange affecting several functions including talking uh, as nature talking de talking deposit and uh, a token deposit and a token withdrawal. According to the most recent uh, research papers from uh, Sergei and uh, University College London, after organizing be close to one million smart contact and uh, thirty-four thousand and two hundred of the of them are one 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 able to hacking. Um, and uh, they also they also they also uh, assemble another three thousand seven hundred and fifty nine. So the pace of this smart contact and found that uh, eighteen uh, that at eight and nine percent of the uh, current low pulse. So so how to lower the probability of loss? Uh, first, we require a uh, complete and uh, objective doubt for our contact. And, uh, second, and, second, we, uh, and second, when any loopholes is found, we need, to make, we need to make any emergence respond, to, uh, respond so that we could now at first, at first time, well, at first time uh, this contact is being attacked. And the third, uh, there, there need to be some it may relate, reverse for those who detect and report any bugs uh, to to positive, to positive in send the whole system is uh, operate. And uh, so next part is my college, my uh, is a uh, handsome guy, Zheng Yue. And uh, by the way, I'm very sorry my English. So, uh, so give you next good one.
Hey, I'm back now. <laughs> Next, we are going to fix on the issue of replay attacks in smart contract. Now, let me explain the concept of replay attack. As distinguished from replay attack in traditional network world, it's not to capture and resend a packet. Uh, that is, if a transaction is legitimate on one blockchain, it's also legitimate on another blockchain. So when you transfer BTC1, your BTC2 or BTC3 may be transferred at the same time. That is the replay attack in blockchain. Uh, to replay attack, we found that many smart contracts adopt the same way to verify the validity of the signature. And it's possible for replay attack. Our motivation is that we propose replay attacks of smart contracts and wish to attract the user's attention. We try to detect the vulnerability in smart contracts and make them more secure. Finally, we want to enhance the risk awareness for contra contract creator and ensure interests of investors. To achieve our goal, we have done several things that uh, we found that the replay attack problem exists in 52 smart contracts. And we analyzed the smart contract example to verify the replay attack. We analyzed the source and the process of replay attack to expand the feasibility of replay attack in principle. We also verified the replay attack based on the signature vulnerability. And finally, we proposed defense strategy to prevent this problem. Then I'm going to show you something. Uh, the first item is vulnerability scanning. Our aim is to get the name and the number of vulnerability of replay attack in smart contracts. And we set the three scanning stands to discover the smart contracts which have the vulnerability. First, judging whether the contract is accord with the ERC20 standard, this requires the total supply to be greater than zero. Second, get the name of the contract to determine whether the name is valid. Thirdly, failed smart contracts are vulnerable to replay attack. The SRM provides easy the easy recovery function to verify signature. If a contract uses the easy recovery function, it was marked as suspicious. The scanning program can be found at the following site. It's in our GitHub storage. After we audited and verified the scanning output, we found the 52 risk targets. And this is the code to scan ERC20 token contract. You can get it from the GitHub, from our GitHub storage. Why does the replay attack occur? The signature of a user were utilized in smart contracts. If the contents of the signature were not correctly limited by the smart contracts, 
there is possibility of replay attack, such as the interface transfer proxy. Here is an example. The contents of the MTC contract signature and the contents of the UGT contract signature are exactly the same. This is an example uh, in the contract. The issue lands like this line. The KEC AK 256 function calculates the hash, and the hash is the input of the signature. So we can see in the parameter of this function, it's just from two value, phi and nonce. There is nothing related to the contract itself exactly. Now let me explain the attack process. We suppose that transaction in RA contract one. User A want to transfer 100 tokens to user B through proxy C, and the X address three tokens should be paid for proxy C as a service fee. In this process, the input of the signature of user A should be A, B, 103, and the latest nonce one. Then the transfer was carried by proxy C. After this transaction being completed, user B can get 100 tokens from user A. Well, suppose user A doesn't carry out the transfer RA contract 2 through proxy. So the latest nonce is also 1. Well, suppose you the now the replay attack starts. After receive 100 tokens from you the A, you the B replay the signature of you the A in from I I control one in I control two. Now he can get another. 100 tokens in RA contract to without the permission of user A. That is to say, the smart contract RA contract to were attacked by user B, and the 100 tokens of user A were stolen. Next, uh, to verify the existence of this vulnerability, we conduct an experiment. The experiment uh, Condition are listed as, as follow. We choose two ERC20 smart contracts, the UGT contracts and the MTC contract. Then we create two accounts, Alice and Bob. Next, we deposit some tokens in the two accounts in corresponding contracts. And the procedure of this verification is, is that in step one, the normal transaction records on the SRM were scanned to find out accounts which, both ha which, which had both UGT tokens and uh, MTC tokens. Um, but here, we use two accounts, Alice and Bob. In step two, Bob induced Alice to send him to UGT's tokens, and the transaction input data is shown as below. The length zero to six corresponds to the arguments in, of the function transfer, transfer proxy. In step three, 
Bob take out the input data of this transaction on the blockchain. The parameter from two value, phi, R, V, and S were extracted from, from the, the, this method. The following is the implementation of the transfer function. In step four, Bob used the input data in step two to execute another transfer in the smart contract of MTC. The result of this transaction is shown as below. Step five, Bob got only, not only two UGT tokens, but also two MTC tokens from Alice. In this procedure, the transfer of two MTC tokens was not authorized by Alice. Now we come into the final part, demonstration and uh, analytics. Um, to begin with the demonstration, we select two contracts, the UGT contracts and the MTC contract. Then we set to our own accounts, Alice and Bob. Alice is the sender and Bob is the re receiver. Both the two accounts own some tokens for transferring. Next, uh, this is the port code. In the code, the parameter from two value phi, v, r, s are all acquired from UGT. This is the caller's parameter read from the chain. The parameter R, S, and V are signature. In another token replay from two, phi are exactly the same as the last call. And the simple proxy transfer scenario is that first the user A delegates the third party user C to help him transfer tokens. User C gets the address of the contracts and creates the instance of the tokens to be transferred. After that, C will get the signature from user A and invoke the transfer function provided by the contract to send the tokens to the token receiver user B. Then the proxy C will wait for the information that the miner has done the package process and finally transaction process finishes. Now let me show you the demo. For comparison, I query the balance of Bob on both UGT contract and the MTC contract. He has six tokens on both the two contracts. Now I transfer three tokens from Alice to Bob on UGT contracts through a proxy. Wait a few seconds for the miner to pack.
Okay, it's fine here. Now I query the signature. And I query the balance of Bob on both UGG contracts and uh, MTC contract again. The balance on UGT is nine, but on the MTC it's still six. I copy the parameters from UGT to MTC. And start the replay attack. You can see here, I just need to input the, um, the password of proxy. I don't need to input the password of Alice. It means that we don't need the permission of Alice. It's finished. Now I query the balance of Bob on MTC. We can see the balance is nine, is nine now. So Bob st st stole three tokens of Alice on MTC contract. To show you the impact of this vulnerability, we also made some related statistics and analysis. By April 27th, the vulnerability of this replay attack risk exists in 52 Ethereum smart contracts. Finally, according to the vulnerability of the replay attack, we divide did these contracts into three groups. The group one, there are 10 contracts. There, no specific information is contained in the signature of smart contract. So the signature can be fully reused. And in the group two, there are 37 contracts. In these contracts, the specific string is added into the input of the signature, but the signature is still can be reused. In the group three, the address of the contract or the address of the sender is contained in the signature of smart contract, but there are strong restrictions that there is still have the possibility of replay attack. Secondly, we classified these contracts by feasible replay attack approach. Five contracts can be replayed in the specific contract itself, and uh, another 45 contracts can be replayed between different contracts. Besides, we divided these 45 contracts into three groups for the specific perfect data used in the signature. Cross contract replays may happen among any contracts as long as they are in the same group. The group one and the group two both add specific identical data 
to the input of signature. We mark the specific perfect data used in group one as data one. And uh, we mark the specific perfect data used in group two as data two. So for example, you can see the data two in these contracts is the same string as you send a message. In group two, in group three, they don't add any prefix data to the input of signature, just uh, from to value fee and announce. And uh, there are two chains can be replayed between test chain and the main chain. Thirdly, according to the trading frequency of above mentioned contracts, by April 13th, 24 contracts were found which had the transaction records within one week. And nine contracts were found which have the transaction records from one week to one month. The proportion of nearly 20% of the total number of the contracts is active. Sixteen contracts were found which have the transaction records beyond one month, and three contracts only have the records for deployment. So according to the comprehensive analysis, 16% of the contract transactions are still active. The reason for replay attack in smart contract is that the misused signature when constructing the contract, the contractor. So our countermeasures are listed here. First, the designers of smart contract should always conform the suitable range of digital signature when designing smart contracts. Second, the smart contracts deployed on public chain should aid in the specific information of the public chain such as the chain ID and the name of the public chain and the other identical information. Finally, the user of smart contracts need to pay attention to news and, report, and reports concerning the vulnerability disclosure. And the conclusion is that the security problems of smart contracts have been widely concerned. As long as the signature was misused in smart contracts, there is possibility of a replay attack. We believe that the vulnerabilities on the Ethereum smart contracts have not totally come to light. Uh, thank you for listening our topic. Uh, if some guys have some question of this attack, and uh, you can send the mail to uh, you can send the mail to us. Thank you.